July the 22nd, 2 Chronicles 6, 13b through 8, 10. Now as all the people watched, he knelt down, reached out his arms toward heaven, and prayed this prayer. O Lord God of Israel, there is no God like you in all of heaven and earth. You are the God who keeps his kind promises to all those who obey you and who are anxious to do your will. And you have kept your promise to my father David, as is evident today. And now, O God of Israel, carry out your further promise to him that your descendants shall always reign over Israel if they will obey my laws as you have. Yes, Lord God of Israel, please fulfill this promise too. But will God really live upon the earth with men? Why, even the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you, how much less this temple which I have built. How I pray that you will heed my prayers, O Lord my God. Listen to my prayer that I am praying to you now. Look down with favor day and night upon this temple, upon this place where you have said that you would put your name. May you always hear and answer the prayers I will pray to you as I face toward this place. Listen to my prayers and to those of your people Israel when they pray toward this temple. Yes, hear us from heaven, and when you hear, forgive. Whenever someone commits a crime and is required to swear to his innocence before this altar, then hear from heaven and punish him if he is lying, or else declare him innocent. If your people Israel are destroyed before their enemies because they have sinned against you, and if they turn to you and call themselves your people and pray to you here in this temple, then listen to them from heaven and forgive their sins and give them back this land you gave to their fathers. When the skies are shut and there is no rain because of our sins, and then we pray toward this temple and claim you as our God and turn from our sins because you have punished us, then listen from heaven and forgive the sins of your people and teach them what is right and send rain upon this land which you have given to your people as their own property. If there is a famine in the land, or plagues, or crop disease, or attacks of locusts, or caterpillars, or if your people's enemies are in the land besieging our cities, whatever the trouble is, listen to every individual's prayer concerning his private sorrow, as well as all the public prayers. Hear from heaven where you live and forgive, and give each one whatever he deserves, for you know the hearts of all mankind. Then they will reverence you forever and will continually walk where you tell them to go. And when foreigners hear of your power and come from distant lands to worship your great name and to pray toward this temple, hear from heaven where you live and do what they request of you. Then all the peoples of the earth will hear of your fame and will reverence you just as your people Israel do. And they too will know that this temple I have built is truly yours. If your people go out at your command to fight their enemies, and they pray toward this city of Jerusalem which you have chosen, and this temple which I have built for your name, then hear their prayers from heaven and give them success. If they sin against you, and who has never sinned, and you become angry with them, and you let their enemies defeat them and take them away as captives to some foreign nation near or far, and if in that land of exile they turn to you again, and face toward this land you gave their fathers, and this city, and your temple I have built, and plead with you with all their hearts to forgive them. Then hear from heaven where you live, and help them and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Yes, oh my God, be wide awake and attentive to all the prayers made to you in this place. And now, O oh Lord God, arise and enter this resting place of yours, where the ark of your strength has been placed, let your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation, and let your saints rejoice in your kind deeds. O Lord God, do not ignore me. Do not turn your face away from me, your anointed one. O remember your love for David and your kindness to him. As Solomon finished praying, fire flashed down from heaven and burned up the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple so that the priests couldn't enter. All the people had been watching, and now they fell flat on the pavement and worshipped and thanked the Lord. How good he is! He is always so loving and kind. Please. Then the king and all the people dedicated the temple by sacrificing burnt offerings to the Lord. King Solomon's contribution for this purpose was 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. The priests were standing at their posts of duty, and the Levites were playing their thanksgiving song, His loving kindness is forever. 
using the musical instruments that King David himself had made and had used to praise the Lord. Then, when the priests blew the trumpets, all the people stood again. Solomon consecrated the inner court of the temple for use that day as a place of sacrifice, for there were too many sacrifices for the bronze altar to accommodate. For the next seven days, they celebrated the tabernacle festival with large crowds coming in from all over Israel. They arrived from as far away as Haman, at one end of the country, to the brook of Egypt at the other. A final religious service was held on the eighth day. Then, on October 7th, he sent the people home, joyful and happy, because the Lord had been so good to David and Solomon and to his people Israel. So Solomon finished building the temple as well as his own palace. He completed what he had planned to do. One night, the Lord appeared to Solomon and told him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this temple as the place where I want you to sacrifice to me. If I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or if I command the locust swarms to eat up all of your crops, or if I send an epidemic among you, then if my people will humble themselves and pray and search for me and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear them from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. I will listen wide awake to every prayer made in this place. For I have chosen this temple and sanctified it to be my home forever. My eyes and my heart shall always be here. As for yourself, if you follow me as your father David did, then I will see to it that you and your descendants will always be the kings of Israel. But if you don't follow me, if you refuse the laws I have given you and worship idols, then I will destroy my people from this land of mine which I have given them. And this temple shall be destroyed, even though I have sanctified it for myself. Instead, I will make it a public horror and disgrace. Instead of being famous, all who pass by will be incredulous. Why has the Lord done such a terrible thing to this land and to this temple, they will ask. And the answer will be, because his people abandoned the Lord God of their fathers, the God who brought them out of the land of Egypt, and they worshipped other gods instead. That is why he has done all this to them. It was now 20 years since Solomon had become king, and the great building projects of the Lord's temple and his own royal palace were completed. He now turned his energies to rebuilding the cities which King Hiram of Tyre had given to him, and he relocated some of the people of Israel into them. It was at this time, too, that Solomon fought against the city of hamath Zoba and conquered it. He built Tadmor in the desert and built cities in Hamath as supply centers. He fortified the cities of Upper Beth Horan and Lower Beth Horan, both being supply centers, building their walls and installing barred gates. He also built Baalith and other supply centers at this time and constructed cities where his chariots and horses were kept. He built to his heart's desire in Jerusalem and Lebanon and throughout the entire realm. He began the practice that still continues of conscripting as slave laborers the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, the descendants of those nations which the Israelis had not completely wiped out. However, he didn't make slaves of any of the Israeli citizens, but used them as soldiers, officers, charioteers, and cavalrymen. Also, 250 of them were government officials who administered all public affairs. Romans 7:15 through 8:8. 8, 8. I don't understand myself at all, for I really want to do what is right, but I can't. I do what I don't want to, what I hate. I know perfectly well that what I am doing is wrong, and my bad conscience proves that I agree with these laws I am breaking. But I can't help myself, because I'm no longer doing it. It is sin inside me that is stronger than I am that makes me do these evil things. I know I am rotten through and through so far as my old sinful nature is concerned. No matter which way I turn, I can't make myself do right. I want to, but I can't. When I want to do good, I don't. And when I try not to do wrong, I do it anyway. Now, if I'm doing what I don't want to, it is plain where the trouble is. Sin still has me in its evil grasp. It seems to be a fact of life that when I want to do what is right, I inevitably do what is wrong. I love to do God's will so far as my new nature is concerned. But there is something else deep within me, in my lower nature that is at war with my mind and wins the fight and makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. In my mind, I want to be God's willing servant, but instead, I find myself still enslaved to sin. So you see how it is. My new life tells me to do right, but the old nature that is still inside me loves to sin. Oh, what a terrible predicament I'm in. Who will free me from my slavery to this deadly lower nature? Thank God, it has been done by Jesus Christ our Lord. He has set me free. So there is now no condemnation awaiting those who belong to Jesus Christ. For 
the power of the life-giving spirit, and this power is mine through Christ Jesus, has freed me from the vicious circle of sin and death. We aren't saved from sin's grasp by knowing the commandments of God, because we can't and don't keep them. But God put into effect a different plan to save us. He sent his own son in a human body like ours, except that ours is sinful, and destroyed sin's control over us by giving himself as a sacrifice for our sins. So now we can obey God's laws if we follow after the Holy Spirit and no longer obey the old evil nature within us. Those who let themselves be controlled by their lower natures live only to please themselves. But those who follow after the Holy Spirit find themselves doing those things that please God. Following after the Holy Spirit leads to life and peace. But following after the old nature leads to death. Because the old sinful nature within us is against God. It never did obey God's laws and it never will. That's why those who are still under the control of their old sinful selves, bent on following their old evil desires, can never please God. Proverbs for today, 19, 24 through 25. Some men are so lazy, they won't even feed themselves. Punish a mocker, and others will learn from his example. Reprove a wise man, and he will be the wiser.